If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, or if you require answers to specific health care questions or concerns, you should consult your physician or health care provider and not depend solely on information presented in this program. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Garner. Welcome to Ask the Doctor. It's great to be with you today. As you know, this program was created to assist you in understanding medical issues so you can take charge of your own health. It is more important than ever to become an informed patient, and we're here to bring you timely health discussions. Now, for those who are new to the show, there are two ways to get your questions in. First, you can call the live phone line at 718-499-6101. Already I see we're getting some action here. And second, and I've been getting a lot of these, email us your questions to askthedoctor at netny.net and we're going to bring them into tonight's discussion. For this episode, we have Dr. Anthony Sale, a pulmonary attending at the New York Methodist Hospital, Dr. Terence Saki, Medical Director of Cardiology at the New York Methodist Hospital, and Dr. Reginald Manning, Orthopedic Medicine attending at New York Methodist Hospital. And I want to welcome this crew, and any, any of our loyal listeners know that this is an all-star crew that we have here tonight. It, it's gives me a little chill, actually. Actually, my, three of my favorite, I don't want to say favorite, but three of my favorite <laughs> guests are, are sitting there. So get those fingers ready. To, I already see the phones are, are lighting up already. Now we have a big, look at all this in the news that we have for this week. I have a lot collected here, so we're going to get through that and then get right to your phone calls. So the first in the news is just in time for Valentine's Day, chocolate is better than fruit. Amazing. So that, um, who did the study, though? Hershey's sponsored it. So, I mean, you've got you to wonder the impartiality. In the Journal of Chemical Medicine, which is not one of those, it's not a great journal, but at least it makes you feel a little better when you're having the, um, you, you like to bring chocolate home, you know, on Valentine's? I know my wife are giving the chocolate. She's looking for a little, uh, you know, a little <laughs> necklace. Reggie, <something like, laughs> you too? I'll eat the chocolate. Yeah, okay, so, anyway, the deal is chocolate has a lot of antioxidants more than some of what we thought were the great superfruit, uh, such as blueberries. So it's kind of interesting that, but you've got to eat the dark chocolate, and the dark chocolate tends to taste a little bitter at times, so you need about 65 to 70 percent of, of uh, dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Number two, another story that came in, your baby's what he eats. And that's interesting, that the babies who are fed the processed food and, and what we call junk food tended to have lower IQs, and those that were breastfed and were given um, non-processed fresh fruit and so on, fresh vegetables, actually had higher IQs um, later on in childhood. So it's something to think about. Also, that if you start your baby on solid formula at four months of age or under, that you run a, a higher risk of having an obese child. So it's something to think about. Once again, the, the recommendation is breastfeeding through six months. Um, something to think about, though. Another story came about with all the cardiac studies, and maybe we'll get into this with Dr. Saki. They have a lot of x-ray. A lot of x-rays that the people get. And they're saying, you know, maybe you should take that into account that instead of getting another cardiac scan, maybe get a, a stress test or an echocardiogram, things that don't involve ionizing radiation. So it's something to think about. Keep track of all the x-rays, all the CAT scans you get. You should always have that with you. Have it on a little card. Now, an exciting story that came out is a, f a new flu vaccine out of Oxford, England, that instead of um, aiming at proteins on the surface of the virus, it, it aims at um, proteins in the middle of the virus. And it actually stimulates killer T cells to go out and to fight uh, against the flu. What's amazing is that one shot covers all the flu that, that there are. And it's similar to, let's say, getting a tetanus vaccine. You know, you don't get a different tetanus vaccine each year. But you wouldn't get a different flu vaccine each year. And it would be very helpful in, in pandemics that occur and things that occur suddenly, because our process now takes so long to come up with new vaccinations. And interestingly, a lot of our vaccines are not even that effective for older people over 60, it's only about 30 to 50 percent effective the vaccine. Another story that was interesting was eggs have lower cholesterol than previously thought. And this seems to be that our, the chickens are, are being fed better and that the cholesterol levels are, are lower and um, really um, it's actually, actually not the cholesterol that's the worst thing for you but the saturated fats that you get. So, but it's, it's something um, that if you like eggs makes you feel a little better. And then finally a very sad story, MRSA, this resistant staph infection that you hear about. Young athlete out in Long Island has been on a, in a coma for almost nine days now, who was a wrestler and got the, um, the staph infection 
from an, another wrestler, and who went now he's got his lungs are being destroyed by the bacteria. He's got all kinds of trouble with kidneys and so on, and he's on a respirator. So we wish him well. But parents uh, should stress to their children: keep washing your hands, cover up any sores because the infection is opportunistic. So when it sees an opportune time, like a little break in the skin, that's when it gets in and starts to do its damage. So you want to um, not share. Tell them not to share any towels or razors. And um, if you do see a little pimple or something that looks new, that you want to get in, if there's any sign of infection, you want to get in and see a doctor as soon as possible. So that's uh, MRSA, stands for uh, a resistant staph infection. I want to welcome Monsignor Bennett. Monsignor came out on a cold night. This is a freezing night, isn't it? About 17 degrees. And Monsignor never misses a show, except for one he missed. But that was not a bad record. So thanks, Monsignor. It's good to see you. Now the quiz. Okay, get your pens ready here. Which United States president fathered the most children? Now, these are legitimate children we're looking for, because we may have different answers. So, which U.S. president fathered the most children? Okay, now that you got that set and we've got everything out of the way, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to go right to your questions. The topics are lung disease, cardiology, and orthopedic medicine. And your number to call is 718 499 6101. You can also email us questions at askthedoctor at netny.net. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Steve Garner, the host of Ask the Doctor. In addition to watching Ask the Doctor every Tuesday night at 8, you can also visit www.netny.net slash askthedoctor. There you can find the topics and guests of each episode. You can read my column from the week for the tablet, and for more advice, you can watch episodes you've missed. More importantly, you can post your questions and I'll answer them on the video blog. So visit www.netny.net slash askthedoctor and get your daily dose of healthy advice. And welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are lung disease, cardiology, and orthopedic medicine. I want to welcome our doctors, Dr. Anthony Saylor, uh, it's a pleasure to have you back here. You're back, Steve. I, I just wanted to offer my condolences. I know I speak on behalf of our whole panel that recently you, you lost your dad. You and your family are in our thoughts and prayers. He was a good man. He really Thanks. produced a wonderful son in you and your brother, and our thoughts and prayers are with you and your family. Thank you very much. And like very I've really sorry. heard stories of people that he helped that I had no idea that he helped, and it's, it helps the memory and also gives you something to do you know, to carry that on and make sure Breathing. that, thank you very much, thank you. Um, what's going on, um, anything new in the world of pulmonary medicine that the people would like to hear about? Well, um, there certainly are a lot of new technologies, there's new procedures, uh, interventional pulmonology is a field that's becoming interesting and I think that as over the next five years there's going to be an explosion in more pulmonary technology, so we're trying to stay on top of it. I want to get into the flu, how we're seeing the, what's the asthma season like, and um, get a little bit maybe into the World Trade Center. We have a lot of people calling yes. up that feel they were affected and you know, figure out how we can tell if that's sure. so. And Dr. Saki, it's a pleasure to see you. Thank uh, you, Steve. Thanks a lot. And cardiology, any, uh, anything? You well, oh, there's a lot of advancement in technology and in different procedures, but what we're very excited about is really the, the uh, attention being paid to prevention and that a lot of effort and has been paying off in that for the first time, the death uh, mortality rate from heart disease in this country is beginning to decrease. And I that's think great. that's a, uh, a, a tremendous credit to mm -hmm. the educational efforts of many, many organizations and that people are just paying more attention to uh, risk factor modification. And our, I think I would like to, if we can get into some of the ways you can work up, if somebody wants to find out if his heart is in good condition, you know, he's 55, 60 year old, wants to get out and start working out, you know, what are some of the things you would recommend? Sure. Thanks a lot. Great Thank to have you. you. Thank and you. Dr. Reginald Manning is always a pleasure to have. And what's new in the home front? Well, my area of orthopedics, we're doing uh, some work in the area of cartilage repair and regeneration. And they hear talk about the gender specific uh, total knee. Um, I think it's a little overhyped, but um, it's, it's uh, I think, well on the way. You get a lot of calls. We've been getting a lot of calls. I've been telling you you're going to be here about the knees. Also, the, putting some of this in the, in the uh, disc spaces, in, in the back? I, mean. I don't do much back work, but they're, they're trying to get the discs yeah. taken care of as well, yes. So um, we're going to get right to our calls. We never know who the first caller is, so let's see who's on line one. Hello? So my name is Grace. Grace, I've she takes charge right away. Remember Grace? 
Yeah, I know, Grace, you always take charge. You were the one in the King's Placid Diner. That's right. Yes. Right. So, um, I, well, anyway, it's about my life this, it's about my life this evening. Um, my knees. Uh, I told you about uh, some, uh, eight months ago. I had uh, a Supart injection because I lost the arthritis, and I had six injections, three in one knee, three in the other knee. And I, I waited, like they said, and I did what they said, put ice and this and that, but nothing helped. They thought it was going to be successful. They said it's a good successful uh, percentage, but it did me absolutely nothing. Okay, Grace, let me ask Dr. Manning. I think you're about 85? No, I'm, I'm 76. Oh, no. Okay, okay. You get different ages from Grace on different shows. But, uh, Grace, <laughs> yeah, Dr. But Manning's going to... Yeah, I'm on gonna... My medical doctor put me on Sulandac. And that helps my pain. I take one a week, and I get by on that. But still, they're very, uh, they hurt terrible when I climb steps, you know, uh, things like that, or getting in and out of cars or trying to walk. It's All right, hard. Grace. Um I want, to, I want to get to Dr. Manning. What, what are your thoughts on this, that Grace had the injections, not doing all that well? I'm not surprised because I think you're asking that medicine to do a, a whole lot in terms of um, going to the left side of the knee, not the right side, how much is the right amount. And every patient gets the same treatment, three to five injections depending upon their age, their body weight, the amount of arthritis they have. The bottom line is as arthritis gets worse, most modalities will fail or will fail to give any substantial relief. You're fortunate that the sullen clinoral is giving you relief. Um, and depending upon your general health and how bad your arthritis is, you might be a candidate for a new replacement, which actually solves the problem. Uh, it's a big operation, but it works very, very well in the right hands and with the right patient. Grace? Grace? Can I take a shot at the, uh, the, the quiz? Yeah, oh, you think you have the answer to the quiz? Well, I'm, I'm going to try. Okay, let's hear. Uh, I don't know. My husband said one answer, and I said another. Uh, well, maybe I'll say uh, George Washington. Okay, Grace and says the president who's fathered the most children is George Washington. Let's go to our drum roll and see. Ah, ah, Grace, 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 what I don't happened? have very good news for you on this one. Twice, one for you, one for your husband. Okay, no. No. But Grace? Oh, oh, thank you uh, very, very, I appreciate everything that you said. You're welcome, man. Be well. Talk to you soon. Have a good night. Thank you. Let's go to John. Hey, John. Good evening, Doctor. Where How are you calling are you? us from? I'm from the lovely Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Great area, great area. Best food, best pizza. Yeah, so tell us where the best pizza in Bensonhurst is. Spumoni Garden. I was going to say that. Yeah. Spumoni Garden. What about one. the ices? Spumoni Garden. Right. <laughs> so tell me, what, what's your best? You know, you, you have one last cup of ices to have. Which one would you go for? What flavor? Uh, Spumoni. Oh, you go with the Spumoni. It's interesting. Yeah. I like the lemon one. with the when they have the little lemon pieces in it. Mm -hmm. Spumoni is number one in my book. The best. Great. Can't On a summer it. night. Can't beat it. Yes. So, <clears throat> what can we do for you tonight? I have two questions, if it's possible. The first one is, every time I happen to touch water, like when I go, come out of the shower and I uh, wash the dishes, I always have to urinate. Why is that? It's like okay, all what's the, the time. second question? Second question is, I had rotator cuff done two years ago to, to, to the day. Two years ago, I had rotator cuff, my biceps, <clears throat> everything done. He put two anchors in my shoulder. I went for therapy for, uh, I, I stopped therapy about uh, like five, six months ago because I had too much pain in my shoulder. So I went for another MRI and it showed I re my shoulder. So now I don't want to do surgery again. And lately I've been living on these hydrocodone pills for my shoulder. The thing is, if I don't do the surgery, is this, is this tear going to continue to tear or it's going to stay as is? So it's Dr. Manning. Um, the only way it probably would not get worse is to not use the shoulder, which is not practical. But every time you stress the area, it uh, will probably do more and more damage and probably a gradual process. Um, I'd be very careful about the narcotics. That's a slippery slope because your, your requirements will increase as time goes on. So be very, very careful about that. That, yeah, I get, it, it makes, me, makes me a little nauseous, groggy. Makes Common me side sleep effects. Good, but it does ease the pain. Common side effects. Those are the side effects. I get yeah, the, Common I, side I, effects I, of narcotics. 
So um, we'll take a stab at number two next week, okay? We'll hold okay, off on Doc. the other question. Listen, I want to say my condolences uh, to you and your family about your dad. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, John. And please call us back next week. Will do. Thank you so much. Be well. Take care. Let's go to Marie, who may have the answer to the quiz. But hold your tickets. We're not sure. I hate that okay. bingo when somebody else has bingo and you use... <laughs> Well, you think I may have the answer? That's what, there's a rumor. We're not sure. What do you, what do you think? Who, had, who fathered the most legitimate children of any president? Well, I think it was Roosevelt, but I'm not too sure. Maybe it's Kennedy, Ethel Kennedy's husband. Had, they had so many children, but I, have, I don't know why. I, I kept thinking that it's probably Roosevelt. Which Roosevelt? Uh, the Roosevelt during World War II. There was another, yeah. right? Wasn't there with two yeah, Roosevelt? Theodore Roosevelt. FDR. So you think it was Roosevelt during World War II? Yeah. With Mrs. Roosevelt? <laughs> I hope so. Okay. I'm saying or maybe anything. Maybe with his girlfriend. How do I know? Okay. Can we get a, a drum? Can we get those drums rolled up and see what we got here? <laughs> oh. Then it was then it was a Kennedy. The For Kennedy. me, no, no, only one guess, only one guess. But uh, oh, it was Kennedy. I thought Kennedy I, had about eleven children. I thought Kennedy was a president. But she wasn't right. related to a president. But no, not her. Her husband was. He was assassinated. I'm, I'm getting confused. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm getting confused. Uh, we're gonna. <laughs> what, but what about the medical issue? Okay, I have a question for the orthopedic doctor. Oh, you've given him a lot of work here tonight. Oh, uh, let him uh, let him earn his living. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi, Gee, doctor. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Very, very good. Now, could I bring out a point to you? Sure. I, I was also in the medical profession. I was a registered nurse. I worked 24 years in the ER. As you can understand, it was wear and tear on my body. Needless to say, several, several years ago, I, 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 when I would extend my leg, I would hear a crepitous sound. I was very, very upset. I had severe, severe pain. So after a month, I tried nursing myself, and I was unsuccessful. So I went to see an orthopedic doctor. He said, let me do an MRI. And he did, and he diagnosed me as having stage 3 arthritis. He said, the first thing you have to do is lose weight. And I was severely depressed that week, so I lost 10 pounds. But unfortunately, you know, with weight problems, you gain it back. Quite, it's a roller coaster effect. Needless to say, I started doing a, quite a bit of walking. Knock on wood, I don't have any more problems. What's the reason for that? Can I survive with stage 3 arthritis without in the future having a knee replacement? Well, you asked me to predict the future. I'm not good at that. I but I think the difference, is, the difference is if you're just walking, there's not a lot of flexion in the knee. But if you do things like squatting and stair climbing, that puts a lot more pressure on your kneecap area. So you but may you find that level surfaces you can function pain well. When I'm walking. Say again? When I go up and down the steps, I really don't have that much pain either. You're, you're ahead of the game. You're ahead of the game then. Are you taking so any medicine for do? inflammation? What? Are you taking any medicines for, to fight Absolutely inflammation? Absolutely not. Okay. You're ahead of the game. Beautiful. Good, I hope it stays that news. way. Good luck. Good news. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. next week. Take care. Before we go today, I want to get the emails revved up because I saw there was an interesting email on there that I'd like to get to right after this. Um, we're going to go with there's someone else, Elaine, who thinks she may have the answer to the quiz. Hello, yes. Elaine. Hi, yes. Hi. How are you? How are you doing? Are you, where are you calling us from? From that, from. Um, Burgundy. See, I can tell excitement in the air. You almost <laughs> forgot. You're... No, I forgot. I know because I want to give you deep sympathy for your father. Oh, he helped my you. daughter and I in Canarsie. Thank you very much. You know, lovely man. Thanks. My, my daughter and your daughter went to high street, elementary, junior high school together. Really? Yeah. That's great. With hope. Yes. Yes. Yes, in 276 in Belize. That was it. Was great going there, wasn't it? Great day. Great day. They used to go up to the parents, see the plays and stuff yes. like that. The pajama yes. game and mm -hmm. fiddle. I knew your mother. I know your whole family. Well, your wonderful family. Master tough on your gra on your granddaughter, Thank you. grandson. So my daughter is on Facebook with hope. Excellent. So now we we uh, we got to get to got to get to business here now. Yes. Okay. George Bush Senior. Stand back a second. Okay. Okay. Elaine is proffering a guess. Again, George Bush Senior. Yes. Is it George? Elaine, You're amazing. I'm, it's wrong. Okay. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. <laughs> That's okay. But you'll call back next week? We will. Thank we, you very much. Thanks, Anne. Thank Bye. you. Okay, we're getting those emails revved up, I hope, because I want to get to those. But we have Anthony now on line one. Anthony. How are you? Hi. Good. This, this I think I got the answer to your quiz. You think you got the answer. Can you just um, do, give us a, se a second to get our uh, drum roll, okay? We get the men on the drums. No problem. Okay, who do you think it is? Abraham Lincoln. A old honest Abe. Oh my God! What's
What's going on here tonight? We can't. It's a tough one. That's a tough one. Anthony? I do have a question for you, though, Doc. Okay, we're, what, what's the question? I would like to know, what does it mean, the onset of pul pulmonary heart disease? The onset of pulmonary heart disease. I'm a 35-year-old male, and I was told that I'm on, I have the onset of it. Why don't we let Dr. Saylor <coughs> start, and then Dr. Um, Saki can finish. Okay. Hi, Anthony. You, you oh. have a great first name. Um, <laughs> they may be talking about pulmonary hypertension, which means that the arteries that take uh, blood from your lungs and bring it to your heart, um, those arteries may be under high pressure. If indeed you have pulmonary hypertension, at times, that could be a serious condition. At times, it, it's mild. So really, there's a lot that goes into it. You would have to be checked for connective tissue diseases. You would have to be checked for perhaps lung diseases. We would check for sleep apnea. And then, of course, you would end up with my colleague, Dr. Saki, where an echocardiogram or some other cardiac testing would be considered. So I think if indeed that's true, um, it's something that you should pay attention to. I'll let Dr. Saki comment further. Anthony, I just ask, uh, are, you, are you a smoker? And, I am and not I think a smoker. You're, I'm sorry? I am not a smoker. Well, that, that's probably the biggest risk factor, and having that, not doing that, it really puts you ahead of the game in the evaluation of, of, of the pulmonary, potential pulmonary heart disease. Okay. I hope that helps you, Anthony. Thank you, Doc. Okay, take care. Now, we're trying to get this question answered. I know that Dr. Saki happens to be a history buff. So give us a little quiz, give us a little hint about this president. It doesn't have to be a lot, but something that make us think about him. Well, I, I believe uh, uh, he was president in the mid 19th century. Hint, okay, that's good. <laughs> mid 19th. That helps a lot of people jumping up with the answer. Yeah. Now. <laughs> that's the 1800s for those who are like me. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's go to this email question from John in Sunnyside. And he has a question. I noticed that famous personalities have listed pneumonia as the cause of death. Jack Lane for one. I have taken the pneumonia shot that should prevent me from getting into the hospital. It seems improbable that these notables did not get the shot. What do you think? Thank you, John. So, John, that, that's a good question. Unfortunately, the pneumonia shot, or what we call the pneumococcal vaccine, doesn't prevent you from getting pneumonia. You can get the pneumococcal vaccine and still get pneumonia. Now, it does help prevent certain types of pneumonia, and those types of pneumonia, in many instances, can be very serious. So we usually recommend the pneumonia shot for people who are over 65 or people who have had um, lung disease or heart disease. So the pneumonia shot is a good tool to help prevent certain types of pneumonia, but unfortunately it does not prevent all types of pneumonia. Thank you very much. Good question, actually. You know, a lot of pneumonias are cause of death there. Okay, we got Sandy, who may have the answer to the quiz. Sandy? Yes. Hi, how are you? Where are you calling us from? Brooklyn. Which part? Canarsie. Canarsie. Have you ever, have you ever won the quiz before in this show? Never. So you think you're going to win tonight? Probably not. Oh, well, let's <laughs> take a step back. I, I hear you've got to get confident. Let's hear who do you think that answer is? Who's fathered the most children of any president? Children. George Washington, but somebody already said that. Right. So you want to check and see if George Washington changed? So no, it didn't change. No, it didn't change. So give, give another one. Um, Abraham Lincoln. Then we also got that one. Um, I really don't know. Uh, I really want the answer to my question, okay. my medical question. Okay, let's go to the medical question. Maybe that's better. Let's yes. see. What do we have on that? My medical question, do you want me to repeat it? Yes. What yeah. is it? Okay. My husband was di is diagnosed with Parkinson's. He has it for about five years. Recently, he gets very agitated, and he was prescribed Ativan. I want to know whether Ativan is okay to take, like, every day, or do you get addicted to it? Is Ativan okay to take every day? He's getting um, for agitation. You know, that's a, that's a hard question to answer without knowing, knowing your husband. Uh, certainly, uh, I, I think the best advice that I think we can give you tonight is to, to really check with your neurologist, the one who's managing his Parkinson's disease. 
uh, and certainly uh, you know, with the Parkinson's medication that he's on, there might be interactions. No, it certainly no, it's may the, be perfectly fine. the neurologist fine. who gave it. Then, then I would say that you're on safe grounds uh, continuing it. Sandy, sounds like a good idea to keep taking it. And, um, you know, it's not for everyone, but we, you, you're taking it from a specialist, so you want to do that, okay? So I didn't get the Canorsi part. Where is he from? And I don't even know his name, the doctor that, that's talking now. Oh, he, he's not from Dr. Saki. He's at New York Methodist Hospital. Oh, he's, I he's thought he was from Canorsi because people were talking to him about Canorsi. No, no, no. But, um, not, not Dr. Sackey, the other man, the one with the, uh, with the glasses and the beige suit. Sandy? Yes? We're not sure, but... Um, him, him, the one Thank you very glasses. much. This doctor. Yes. That's Dr. Manning. I got to move on, but it's always good to hear from you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Not Thank you. We are going to... We're going to go to Marty. Marty? Yeah. Hi, how are you doing? Okay. Where are you calling from? Uh, Midwood. Midwood, not, not far from here. What do you like to eat when you go out to, in Midwood to eat? Uh, a pizza. Where, where would you go? The Farrah's? Yeah, the Farrah's. Not a bad. Anybody eating the Farrah's here? I know Dominic When well. he's open, you know, he hasn't been open a month. He hasn't been open? I know the health department keeps getting this guy because he cut. <laughs> Am I right, Marty? He, no, actually, I, I think he's kind of, after 50 years, he's slowing down a bit. He's entitled. Okay. So what, what can we do for you tonight? You have an answer to the quiz? Um, let's see. Uh, Thomas Jefferson? Oh, there's not a bad one. He had 10 children, two um, illegitimate, eight regular. So. Oh, uh, I feel bad for you, Marty. Marty, are you yeah. okay? <laughs> we have a mortality with this show. <laughs> I think Marty has been devastated. All right, Marty, thank you. What we're going to do now is we're going to, to take a little break. And when we come back, we're going to be taking more of your questions. Lung disease, cardiology, orthopedic medicine. The number to dial is 718-499-6101. And the email is askthedoctor at netny.net. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Steve Garner, the host of Ask the Doctor. In addition to watching Ask the Doctor every Tuesday night at 8, you can also visit www.netny.net slash askthedoctor. There you can find the topics and guests of each episode. You can read my column from the week for the tablet, and for more advice, you can watch episodes you've missed. More importantly, you can post your questions and I'll answer them on the video blog. So visit www.netny.net slash askthedoctor and get your daily dose of healthy advice. Welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are lung disease, cardiology, and orthopedic medicine. With me, I have Dr. Anthony Saylor, pulmonary attending at New York Methodist Hospital, a member of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Terrence Sackey, medical director of cardiology at New York Methodist Hospital, and Dr. Reginald Manning, orthopedic medicine attending at New York Methodist Hospital. Let's get back to your questions. That is Dr. Saki. A member of the, um, the crew out here has a question regarding, he has atrial fibrillation. He's 75 years old. Um, he's been put on a beta blocker and, and anticoagulated. He's now beginning to get periods of dizziness, and the halter monitor showed that there were pauses of four to five seconds. He's been recommended to have a pacemaker put in. The question he had was, could the beta blocker be causing those pauses? Should he, should he try and discontinue the beta blocker first? I think that would be the wise thing. It, uh, the problem sometimes is that you're giving the beta blocker to control the rate, to slow the rate down. And sometimes if it slows it too much, you, you certainly would, the first step would be, I agree, to decrease the beta blocker. Uh, and then the, the problem then would be, it, will it control the fast heart rate? And so then the decision on a pacemaker, as long as he's not having any pa fainting spells, I think you have time to kind of analyze it, stop the medication, or, or adjust the medication, and see if you have a better, a better run with that medication. Thanks a lot. Thanks for that question. And now we're going to, um, we're going to go to Joyce on line three. Hi, Joyce. Hi. Hi. Where are you calling us from? Uh, Bed-Stuy in Brooklyn. Bed-Stuy. We never find a good restaurant there. Have you found it yet? The only place I go to is Junior's, downtown Brooklyn. Junior's, the old cheesecake out there. What do you, what do you like in there? Pastrami. Oh, like a little fat on that? Ah. Uh, you like extra lean? Yes. Ah, ah. So, Geraldine, 
Now, the, the, the folks here tell me that you might have the answer to the question. No, I've been trying to think. I can't think. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. It's a false rumor. I got up here, but um, do you have a question? Yes. What can we do for you? I have uh, sarcoidosis. Oh, sarcoidosis. And, yes. I had a fungus ball removed three years ago. And I would like to know if, if there, you know, if another one comes or you don't get another one after that. Okay, Dr. Saylor. Geraldine, glad you're feeling better. That's a, a relatively common complication of not only sarcoidosis, but any what we call structural lung disease, where your lung tissue itself is damaged. So the sarcoidosis may have caused some damage, and then the fungus ball, which is medically called an aspergilloma, uh -huh. comes along and sort of takes residence in your lung. It's a very comfortable environment for the fungus ball to live. Now, it happens fairly frequently, but I can tell you it is unlikely, Geraldine, for it to happen a second time to you. I couldn't say it's impossible, right. but the statistics would make it highly unlikely. So I think you should be free from any further fungus ball, and it sounds like your sarcoidosis is under good control. Yes. So well, Gerald that's great. Okay. It sounds like everything is good. Yes. Thank Excellent. you very much. You're good welcome. to hear from you, Geraldine. Okay, bye-bye. Now we have an email answer, and there's not a lot of fanfare here. We got an email from Geraldine, who has the answer, she thinks, to the quiz. And she says the president who's fathered the most number of children is John Tyler. Uh, is the answer John Tyler? Wow, so it came through on the email question, and, and um, not a lot of back and forth I can do here with Geraldine, but I can talk to Dr. Sackey to tell us a little bit about this guy Tyler, because we don't know much. He's a prolific man, apparently. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's a lesser-known president, but really was, uh, made his biggest impact in uh, the war with Mexico and uh, made a big attempt to kind of uh, increase the territory of the United States by waging that war. Wow. Was he considered a good president? Uh, in the history, he was about in the middle of the pack. All and right. that's the biggest thing he's known for. And now this. 15 yes. children yes. is not bad. <laughs> Absolutely. So he was, um, we handed to John Tyler, handed to Geraldine, and Geraldine, the quiz, the, as a winner of the quiz, the handmade plaque will be heading to your house. You should be getting it within a couple of weeks. That's freight. You didn't even know you could mail freight, yeah. did you? <laughs> it takes two weeks. Handmade in Japan. You're going to love it. And give us a call. You know, don't be uh, camera shy here, okay? So, Geraldine, thanks a lot. Let's go right now to Bona. Bona? Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Where are you calling us from? Brooklyn. Which part of Brooklyn? Troy Avenue. Troy Avenue. Avenue. Very nice. Is that East Flatbush? Um, this is on like, no, not East Flatbush. Oh, okay. And wh what's your first name? It sounded interesting. Donna. Bonner. Donna. What does it mean? Oh, Donna. Donna. They're putting Donna. Bonner. Right? Bonner sounded, Donna's not that interesting. Okay. <laughs> so what's the question? Yes, John Tyler. You know, this yes, is timing. Timing is everything in life. The person just before you by email got the answer. It was Tyler. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. No, this is, this is bad. It's not okay, much. thank you. I'll try. I'll try again back. next week, okay? Okay, thank you. Take care, Donna, from Troy Avenue. Okay, we're going to go now. That's a shame, isn't it? To Vincent. Vincent. Yes. How are you? I'm okay. You see what happened here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. You see, I have a little grin, I see, a little sadistic. Uh, grin. Right, right, because <laughs> what, I had a question also. What can we do for you? Uh, the answer, I was just saying. Oh, you had I, it too? Yeah, I had it too, but I had somebody beat me to it. Everyone's jumping on the Tyler bandwagon here. <laughs> yes, yes. Do you have a medical question? Yes, uh, for the uh, orthopedic. He's uh, right here. I'm um, having some pain in, like, in my knees and my shoulder. Okay. And what's the question? The question is uh, if there is anything like a uh, medication over the counter that I can use for the um, shoulder pain because it's kind of um, giving me a lot of problems. Okay, in let's the see, Dr. Manny, any, 
Any over-the-counter medication for shoulder pain? If, if it's something inflammatory, you can try a leave. I like a leave better than, um, than Advil or ibuprofen because it lasts longer. You only have to take it twice a day. And if that solves your problem, then you just maybe had a little tendonitis or something. If it doesn't help, you may have to get the work up and find out exactly what's causing the problem. But I start with the leave twice a day. Does that help? Uh, well, one more thing. Uh, that helped, but I drew fluid from my knees before. They've taken out fluid from your knees? Yeah. Okay. And what's the question on that one? I would, um, but it, it still pained me a lot, but it's not swollen, you know, not swollen like when, before when She's I drew the fluid, but it's still giving me a lot of problem. Like, like sometimes they want to throw me down like that. Well, well the fluid's a sign of inflammation again, and why is it coming? It could be from structural abnormalities like a torn cartilage. It could be from synovial inflammation, the joint lining. It could be from arthritis. So um, again, you have to sound like you need to work up to find out exactly what's causing um, the uh, the fluid and the pain. Thanks a lot for the call. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. We just received an email question. It just came in over the wire here from Patty in Staten Island. She says her husband had two stents within three years. He continues to smoke, one pack per day, and now he's diagnosed with diabetes. Will the stents close due to his smoking from Patty? Well, Patty, that's a, a very common scenario, and I think that although those, it's not absolute, statistically there is a great chance that these stents will clog up again uh, because in, in all that we do in, in cardiology, uh, like stenting or even bypass surgery, it truly is not a cure for the, for the disease. So there has to be an attempt to control risk factors, and, and two of the biggest risk factors that uh, uh, contribute to coronary artery disease uh, are smoking and, and diabetes. So I, I think uh, controlling both would go a long way to trying to control the disease progression as well as trying to decrease the chance of what's called restenosis or clogging again in the stents that have been placed. Dr. So you want to just add on to that so maybe get him to stop smoking? His smoking is really going to cause damage emphysema is increased, uh, chronic bronchitis, of course, mm. lung cancer. So in every way, shape, and form, he's hurting himself with the smoking. So please, um, you know, for, for everyone's sake, stop that smoking. Let's go now to Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi, how are you? Where are you calling us from? I'm from Sheepshead Bay in Brooklyn. Beautiful neighbor. Anybody ever go out in the boats there in Sheepshead Bay, fishing? Not fishing. Uh, you going out there? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> got to get no. up 6 in the morning. It's kind of uh, iffy. <laughs> it's not so, me, no. No, what can we do for you? Well, um, I actually, I, I spoke to you several months ago about my husband that had the appendectomy, if you recall, and it ruptured, and you gave him some great advice. Just give it some time. So first I wanted to say thank you. He's feeling much better, and you were right. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask a question um, of the orthopedic surgeon. Okay, he's right here, Dr. Manning. What can we do? Hi, doctor. Um, well, I'm 50 years old. I'm in very good health, um, but I have a problem with my lower back. Mm -hmm. I have several herniated discs, and um, I go to a doctor, pain management doctor that I love, and um, I regularly get trigger point shots, uh, Voltaren gel, um, pain medication when needed, and I've tried therapy. and doesn't really seem to do much for more than a few days at a time. So before I jump to surgery, I was wondering if there's anything else that you could recommend that maybe I could do at home or maybe I could try. Not my area specialty, but I think you've tried just about everything. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> I, um, I would speak to a surgeon just to find out the risks and benefits, and that might be the next step. Um, we do have a couple of good back surgeons at the New York Methodist Hospital. That might be a good resource. Um, Lisa? Okay. Yes. So we gave you good advice before. I think Dr. Manny's giving you good advice here. I know. I was just hoping he would have something different to tell me, but I, I kind of know he's right. <laughs> but you want to go for, you always, we always urge, go for second opinions, you know, get another point of view. It's a good idea. So. Yeah. Thanks. So I remember your voice. It always makes you feel cheerful, your voice. Oh, I thank you. Thanks. That's nice. Call I appreciate back again. it. I thank you very much. Thank you. Quite well. Bye. I see we have Madeline on line one. I don't know if this is the official Madeline or the, Madeline? It's Madeline. Oh, Madeline. Oh, you know, we have a very famous caller who always wins, Madeline, but she hasn't been here. So, <laughs> Madeline. 
sorry, it's not me. <laughs> but no, we're glad. Where are you calling us from? Yes, calling from Brooklyn, New York, and from Bensonhurst. Bensonhurst, and do you agree with with the restaurants out there, Spumoni Gardens for pizza? Spumoni Gardens is very, very good, but La Sorrentina is also very nice. Yeah, that's a nice. Anybody, guys, been? These guys don't get out much. No, <laughs> Sorrentino is a very good restaurant <laughs> over there. Mm -hmm. What it about is. that one? Um, it's the one over on Fifth Ave uh, on Seventy Third Street. Um. The pe that, it's got that, like a, a pizza name to it, but it's more of it's a restaurant inside. Anyway, it's a good place. I'll, I'll think of it and I'll, I'll tell you. But on seven, I guess that might be Gino's Pizza. Gino's, Gino's. They're, they're known as the best. It, it really is a good place. You go yeah. in there, they make you feel comfortable and stuff. It's <laughs> excellent, right? So what can we do for you? Well, I have a question. I've been studying, doing a lot of research on um, lords, and um, a term that comes up is uh, the transverberation of the heart. And I was wondering if Dr. Terence Sackey would be familiar with that term. Some of the saints have had that. The saints have had this condition. Mm -hmm. um, can you re uh, repeat that? The name of the condition. Yes, it's the transverbiation of the heart. Uh, I, I'm really not familiar with that. I, I, I just don't know. Anthony, do you have any... Uh uh, thoughts no. on that? You know, yeah. um, if, you, if we've got the name better, we can't quite yeah, pick up the sorry. name. Uh, it's actually, uh, I guess it would be a medical mystery. Oh, a medical mystery of the heart. Yes. Uh, well, it, it would be, well, if you're considered a saint with certain things like a stigmata of that type. Yes, that I'm familiar with. But, uh, uh, you know, that was bleeding and I was from the spontaneous bleeding. wondering if you bleeding. ever came across that. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I really have not, uh, though I need to look that up, and I certainly will uh, Maybe we can, consider We'll put that. that on the website, actually. Yes. Dr. Sack, you'll do a little research. And I you will do so. If you Thank go to you. The, that's, do, my, that's my work that I'm studying right now. Fantastic. Thanks. Do you Hi. have a computer? Uh, yes, I do. So you're going to look on the website. By um, Friday, we'll have an answer for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Great to talk to you. Interesting okay, have question. have a good time. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> very good. I see we have Beth on line three. Hi, Beth. Yes, hello. Um, talk a little louder, Beth. Put you into... Yes, I'm calling for a question. Okay. Okay, in regards to, uh, I have a call for like uh, about one year now. A call for one year. Right. And um, I saw the ENT doctor and, you know, other doctors, and no way they can come up with an answer what, what is causing my cough. Well, let's know, ask Dr. Okay? Saylor what he thinks. One Excuse year cough. Excuse me? Uh, We're going to ask Dr. Saylor to address this. When what? You listen, you're going to get the answer now. First of all, it's very common to have a chronic cough. So one of the most important issues about cough is medication. Are you on any oh, medication, she, Beth, called ACE inhibitors that can cause a cough? Something that Dr. Saki perhaps would prescribe like Vasotec. Um, and in people who have a chronic cough, the three commonest causes would be post-nasal drip, or we now call upper airway syndrome, and then GERD, or reef, gastroesophageal reflux, and finally asthma. So chronic cough is a very common, it's actually the most common cause uh, for a patient to go visit their physician. So I think, Beth, um, your cough is something that can be looked into with a lot more detail, so don't get frustrated. Go back to your doctor, maybe from the ENT, you can see a different specialist, and hopefully your cough can be relieved. I hope that that um, helped you a lot. See, we got an email question, just came in from Rosalie. She says, I made a mistake tonight. I took the wrong medicine this afternoon. Instead of taking Plavix, I took high blood pressure medicine. I usually take high blood pressure medicine at night. Can I still take the Plavix tonight? I was told to take it the same time every day. And then she adds, I enjoy the show. I met you at the hospital and shook your hand. Thank you. And I'm the lady with lymphedema. Nobody knows what to do with this. Thank you, Rosalie. I remember Rosalie very well, very nice person. Um, Dr. Saki, should she be concerned? Well, I, you know, I think it's a great question and, and potentially a little dangerous uh, if uh, it's not handled correctly. Uh, certainly, uh, she can take the Plavix at night. Uh, but certainly I think the warning is that, and it's very, very common with, with patients on numbers of medications to kind of make a mistake. The idea is never to double up, never try to substitute, and then just get back on schedule. R r very few bad things will happen missing one dose of a medication. And, and the, the message is just don't double up on the medication. Very good. And I remember Rosalie had lymphedema. We have a nice, actually there's a clinic at uh, New York Methodist Hospital. 
we're in the, and is an expert in this. And she, I, we had her on the show, actually, tremendous. She does tremendous work. So I suggest for those of you out there with lymphedema to, to get on the ball there. Okay. Let's see now. We're going to go to line three. Hello. Who is this, please? This is Jim. Jim, how Hi, are you doctor. doing? Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Maspeth, Queens. Maspeth, Queens. And we had a good restaurant out there last week. I can't, was it three, three brothers, three guys? Three sons. Three sons. Three sons. Yeah. How, how is it? It's great. It's you great. Ever I'm that the show? one who told you about it. I know. That was, I haven't had a chance to go there. I think this Saturday night I'm going to go. Oh, great. Great. You ever watch My Three Sons or no? A uh, long time ago. It was a good yeah, show. That, yeah, that, yeah, Fred that, McMurray that, and Bob. That's dating, that's dating both of us. Yeah. So what, uh, what, what could we do? Uh, I, I, I wanted to ask uh, the pulmonologist and the cardiologist as well as uh, your other two doctors if you had any recommendations for what the best method of stopping smoking is. Would cold turkey be the best, or uh, do you have any other recommendations? First of all, to stop smoking, difficult, not impossible. It can be done. I think you have to have a firm resolve, and you really have to want to stop smoking. So what I like to tell my patients is many of them think that a patch or a pill and all of a sudden they're going to have this cataclysmic urge to stop smoking. That is not the case. Really, the best way, I feel, is just to stop. Now, if you really are committed and if you want to stop smoking and you need some type of aid in terms of your nicotine addiction, then at times the patch, at times under a physician's order, a pill can be prescribed. But I feel strongly that you have to really want to stop smoking. And if you try to stop once and don't, don't fret because most studies have shown that it takes around six efforts before you truly stop. Smoking is so dangerous in so many ways. The key, though, is, is the impetus, at least the desire to really want to stop. The aids are helpful and, and necessary and, and can be guided, but it has to come from within, and, and there has to be that commitment. Although it's hard and difficult, it, there really has to be the desire to stop. Jim, I hope that helps you. Thank you. Take care. We're now getting to the rapid fire segment because we're getting so many calls and we're trying to, we have minutes left. So let's go to Gl Gloria and we'll see if we can give a quick answer to this. Hi, Gloria. Hi. How are you doing today? Uh, pretty good. So where are you calling us from? Brooklyn. Which part? Bensonhurst. Ben again, a lot of Bensonhurst tonight in the house, so to speak. Right, and I don't like Spumoni Garden since they changed hands. <laughs> they did change hands? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, I believe they have because it's terrible lately. I they change hands. And I used to go there all the time. So what do you like now? Where do you go now for your uh, pizza and ices? Oh, I like crispy on 13th Avenue. Oh, 13th Avenue? And there's a place on um, Cropsy, Nick's, that makes very good pizza. But um, I cook at home most of the time so, anyway. Very good, very good. What can we do for you? I'd like to ask Dr. Sale a question. Okay, we're in the rapid fire segment, so we let's let's. Um, okay. Pick up the By the way, I get a pain in my back on the lower right side. Is that an indication of pneumonia at all? I do have a cough. I'm on a lot of medications. So, Gloria, first of all, I hope you feel better. Um, it pain in the right side could be a sign of pneumonia, but it really would depend upon some other symptoms. For example is the pain worse when you take a deep breath. If it's worse when you take a deep breath, that right. might suggest that there's pneumonia. Additionally, do you have a temperature? That's another sign of pneumonia. So I think, Gloria, that type of pain is something that should be evaluated. If the pain's been persistent, go see your doctor. Perhaps he can order a chest x-ray and I think that would help you. You are my doctor. Oh, the oh, best. Yeah. So come in. I will. You got okay. the best there. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Okay, that's good. Cynthia. Yes. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Where are you from? I'm from Canarsie. Oh, my, that, my father used to be the superintendent there for 25 years. Did, did you know oh. him? Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, what can we do for you? Okay, well, uh, in 2009, I had a pulmonary embolism, and I was a month pregnant. I'm actually a patient at Methodist Hospital, and my son was born there. Okay. And um, I was considered high risk and everything, but I do want to have another child 
I, I would say in a year or two, but I was told by my primary, which is not, well, yeah, he is part of Methodist, that it might be a problem because I had the pulmonary embolus. Let's get to Dr. Saylor and see the likelihood of repeated pulmonary embolus. Okay. So that's a great question. First of all, I'm glad your son is okay. Um, pregnancy is a big risk for having pulmonary embolism, but just because you had a pulmonary embolism in your first pregnancy doesn't necessarily mean that you'll have one in your second pregnancy. Now, you're not pregnant yet, are you? No. Okay, so one of the issues I think you should do is you can have some testing performed to make sure you don't have what's called um, a coagulation disorder, which would make you clot. If you don't, then the chance of you getting pregnant and having another clot is much less. So that's what I would do. Go see your physician. They can order this panel of blood work that'll check for clotting disorders. And if you don't have those, then I think it would be safer to uh, conceive. You still would have to be watched very closely, but I think that's something your physicians would be uh, willing to do. Thanks a lot, well, Cynthia. Thank you. Appreciate it. Rosemary, how are you? I wanted to say that I was sorry to hear about your father. He sounded like a wonderful man. Thank you very much. I read it in the tablet, so the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Thanks very much. Okay. Um, my question tonight is, I went for an x-ray because my back was bothering me, and they found that I have a shift in my back. Um, it's not really, you know, I had a little pain, you know. And on x-ray, I guess it, it's like it moved over a little. I, I don't know how I did it or when I did it. Now, is there anything, uh, can, is there any way I can make it go back into alignment? Or? Let's see, Dr. Manning, what do you think about chiropractors? Or? I'm not exactly sure what the shift is. Yeah, uh, I don't know. They said it's a it shift a in my spine. Uh, they, no, not a curvature. It's like a shift. In, instead of going sh you know, straight in alignment, it's over a little. That's it might have been what we call spondylolisthesis, where it slips forward. That's it. Spondylolisthesis. Spondylolisthesis. That's it. Spondylolisthesis. Yes. Um, if it's a grade one, which means less than 25%, usually mm -hmm. that's not terribly symptomatic. Okay. Um, you can manage that with some stretching exercises, particularly the hamstrings, mm -hmm. and inflammatories. More advanced, sometimes it requires surgery to stabilize that. Right. So it doesn't keep going. Okay. So we're trying a little therapy and some many inflammatories. Okay, Rosemary, it's great, great to hear your voice. We always oh. love to hear it. Here. Okay. We'll talk to you soon. Let's go to Nick now. Hi, Nick. Yeah, hi, Dr. Gunner. We're in the rapid-fire uh, segment, so what do we, let's hear that rapid question. Uh, I heard today that uh, crushed garlic can cure a fungus, and then uh, I wanted to ask Dr. Manning if laparoscopic surgery is available for bulge disc. Let's go to number two first. If, if arthroscopic surgery is available for bone cysts? No, bulging disc. Bulge, bulge, bulging oh, disc. Uh, I think they are doing some um, um, disc work through the scope now, not my area specialty, but we do have a couple of surgeons at Methodist who I think can do that. So I think the answer is yes. As far as okay. garlic, yeah. anybody want to throw that out and garlic and fungus? I think I would stick to Lodgerman. I was on Dr. Oz today on his show. I was on uh, the Dr. Oz show. So oh, Oz, sure. that's why you got to listen here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And one thing, bank, bank heart lesion, uh, is that something serious? Uh, a my bank heart lesion it. is a sign that you've had a dislocating shoulder. Um, it's an area where you have a, a compression defect or a, a, a divot in the back of the humeral head which has been compressed against the glenoid. And if it's a large one, it predisposes you to getting another one, a uh, dislocation. So it's a sign that you've had a shoulder dislocation. My wife, my wife fell down and she's in a lot of pain. And we want to know if that's something that a surgeon, or, you know, who, what kind of doctor would we go to? Um, yeah, uh, an orthopedic surgeon who takes care of your shoulder should be able to handle that. Uh, if it's just one dislocation, depending on her age, it might not recur. Uh, but you need some therapy and um and oh, man, I can't believe it. We're done. Nick, I'm sorry. We, we finished. We still have people waiting to call, but we got to close, I'm telling you, because we only paid for one hour, and we've got the next uh, group coming in. So that's it for this episode. I want to thank Dr. Anthony Saylor, Dr. Taryn Saki, Dr. Reginald Manning for coming in tonight on this freezing night. We hope that we were able to help you. It's good to remember you should always be proactive about your own health. Speak to your doctors about your concerns. Go for second or third opinions. In the meantime, visit our website at netny.net slash askthedoctor. Here you can see video blogs, the tablet column, podcasts, forums, sending your quiz suggestions, and, and more. You can also watch last week's episode tonight at 10 p.m. I want to thank Linda Lapitosa, our quiz master, and I want to thank you for all your questions. 
Now, next week, we have our special episode, the day after Valentine's special episode, where we're going to talk about a device. They're, they're hurrying me up here. They can save your life, this device. And you're going to see, hear, really hear a heartwarming story of, of a family's tragedy and how they are going around the country helping others. And we're going to hear from videos from the streets of Brooklyn, where they go out in Queens and, and ask questions. We're going to talk about emergency medicine, breast disease, geriatric medicine. Goodbye, and I'll see you in the tablet. Thank you.